you guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you with a new Let's Play episode of Remember the Flowers. So y'all, this is going to be my last video before, uh, actually y'all are probably going to be watching this, uh, the day we are heading across the country. So, you know, wish us safe luck and everything, and we hope y'all, uh, enjoy the content that we put out. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm, Chaney, we're up, and let's go. It's not an exaggeration to say that he's the reason I started to believe in hope again. Hope that there's at least some good out here, some good out there, and that it's worth trying to find it. He opens his eyes and looks at me with compassion. It's thanks to him that I was able to meet you, after all. He got us to meet the Resistance, and we eventually got employed by them. It's a good time, all in all. Aaron's expression turned sour. Well, I thought it was. I guess others thought differently. Aaron takes a deep breath after talking for so long. I, uh, hope that learning more about me doesn't scare you, or anything. Aaron, you don't have to worry about that. You're like my best friend. The fact that you felt comfortable enough to tell me everything means a lot to me. It was mainly out of fear, if anything. And that in and of itself takes courage. Trust me, you're fine. Thank you, Cyrus. Don't mention it. Need a hug? I wouldn't turn one down. Come here, big guy. To reassure him, I stand up so I can give him, a, give him as big of a hug as I can manage. Like before, he's shaking as we embrace. Now more than ever, I want to tell him that there's a possibility that Xavier is alive and well. But I just can't. I need more information before I let him know. Maybe Silver can do something about that one day. Aaron eventually breaks the hug and starts to rub his eyes. Phew, I uh, don't know what got over me. And man, it got late. Sure did. I'm about ready for bed. What about you? You're here. Without hesitating, he takes a pill bottle out of his axiom. Pops a couple into his mouth before swallowing. Feel free to wake me up in the morning if I oversleep, but I'll try to set an alarm for us. Sounds good to me. I'm excited to sleep in a tent. I haven't gone camping in a long time. Let's stop procrastinating and get to bed. Since the moon is since the moon is the only source of light we have, Aaron tries to lead me to the tents. He gently takes my hand to guide me over everything. I wish I had good night vision. Once I make it inside, he zips my tent closed. Then he heads to his, which is right next to mine. Good night, Cyrus. And, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for telling me, Aaron. Good night, you big softy. <laughs> good night, Cyrus. Even from a tent over, I can definitely hear him purring. Listening to that easily puts me to sleep. Alrighty. Oh, we're getting some memories again. Yep. Yep, he's walking through his memories, I guess. Oh, maybe not. When we eventually roll into town, I'm met with an existential dread I've never felt before. Oh, oh, okay, so this, uh, this is their uh, town, okay. Almost everything is in ruin. Vegetation taking over the sidewalks and roads. I can still picture scenes of this town in its heyday, with bustling streets and community. Now, at this point, most of the buildings are showing their age, with many falling into disrepair. It's a small miracle that there are still any buildings left standing. There aren't any windows left in the buildings, and the ones that are, that are still there are absolutely covered in faded graffiti. I guess mass looting makes sense. I stand over a group of makeshift graves. It takes me some time to process it all. There aren't any names or gravestones. I have no idea who these people are. No one has for centuries. At the very least, I can pay my respects, if only to make myself feel just a little bit better. Everything is everything is just about how I would have expected it, or rather how I should have expected. It's been 300 years after all. Still, it does make me a little sad to see the town I grew up in falling apart like this. When I glance at Aaron, he looks worried. This is my idea to begin with. I don't want Aaron to think it was a bad one. With no more hesitation, I take my helmet off before getting out of the sidecar. I take in a deep breath of crisp what of crisp what used to be Vermont air. I'm happy to see that the pine trees are still alive and well. It makes this feel just a little bit like home. Despite how barren everything is, I'm still feeling nostalgic. It's like now, water time. How are you feeling? It's been so long since I was last here. I wouldn't be surprised if I forgot how to get to my house. Well, we've got a lot of time on our hands to find it. We sure do. I think I've got a better idea. Want to want to take a trip with me down memory lane? Of course, Cyrus. Lead the way. I try shaking off my uneasiness. 
Who knows? Maybe it'll be fun giving a good friend a tour of, a, a tour of the place. After we walk for a couple blocks, I point to a building at the top of, at the top of the hill. From here, I can I can just see I can see just how dilapidated it really is. That's Meld Elementary School. It wasn't very big, so it only went up went up to fifth grade. The middle school is a separate building in town. Oh wow! Can we go inside? I don't see why not. How come? I've never been to school before. I'm kind of curious. As good of a reason as any. Who knows? Maybe we'll find some ghosts. Do you believe in them? If this world has taught me anything, it's that nothing is impossible. Well said. Ghosts of the past. It doesn't matter. It doesn't take us long for us. It doesn't take us long for us to break into the school. The doors have been rusted shut for so long that even I could push them open. I let Aaron lead the way inside, answering any questions he asks. These chairs are really small. This is a kindergarten room. Kids are pretty young when they start. I would imagine anyone could fit in them. My hand is bigger than some of these chairs. To be fair, you are a rather large lad. Another fair point. We make our way through the various classrooms. There's a lot of stuff people left by that piques Aaron's interest. Would it be disrespectful to take anything here? I don't think so. Beats leaving it here for no one to use. I guess you're right. These are crayons, right? Yeah, I bet you might be able to use them. Doubt the markers would work, though. Oh. This childlike wonder makes him look right at home here. I look around the room, eventually finding the desk I used to sit at all those years ago. I try my best to sit in it, but it's very apparent that even I'm too big for these. Still, looking at the faded electronic whiteboard from this angle brings back memories. Like Diana helping me with homework, or telling me about a new cartoon she was into. Times really were a lot simpler back then. Huh? What did you say? Aaron is scribbling in a notebook on the teacher's desk, trying his best not to accidentally tear the old paper. Nothing. Well, what you doing? I don't have a lot of pens and pencils that still work, so I'm trying out these crayons. I get it from the tiny desk to watch him. My paws are too big for these things, though. My penmanship is already atrocious as it is. It just takes practice. Keep it up, and I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. Mind showing me how you write? Sure, although it's been a while. I pick out an orange crayon as I try to write my signature. Cyrus G. Cantwell. Oh, wow, you don't need—you didn't even hesitate. I guess the muscle memory is still there. We're in the room where I learned cursive, after all. You promised to teach me sometime, remember? Of course, maybe when we get home? Sounds like a deal. It's a sandwich shop I used to go to a lot. It eventually became my first summer job. Summer job? Like, only working during the summer? Yeah, back then, when you were still in school, you really only had time to work in the summer. Oh, huh, I just figured people did both. That was common, too, but I couldn't hack it. I just wanted to help my folks out with the bills when I could, that was all. Guess some things never change, huh? Guess not. Glad to know some things have stayed consistent over the years. As I look around the streets, more and more nostalgia floods in. Most of the uneasiness has long since melted away. Despite how barren everything is, I'm glad we came. I direct us to the road my house was on, letting my memories guide me. No, water time. We eventually make it to the local park. It was old even when I lived here. I'm a little sad that almost everything has either toppled over or has rusted too much to be safe. Even the ropes on the swing seem to have rotted away years ago. What is this place? It's an old park for kids to play in. You've never seen one? Nope. Back in, Aqu back in Aquilo, the most we had was the ocean. But the orphanage was too far to walk to it. I see. Well, maybe one day we can make a park back home. Oh? Do you really want to? I don't know. Just feels like a park is a must for a town to be cozy. Maybe you should take up architecture. I'm sure you have ideas no one could think of. Alright, one second, y'all. I need to plug in my headset. Plug in my beautiful, beautiful glowing headset. One second, y'all. Transition. There we go. Okay. Heh, <laughs> maybe. After that, I'll start recreating stories that no one's read in centuries for profit. That could be extremely lucrative now that I think about it. Better let me read them, too. It could be the first, to, could be the first I go to when I, need to, when I need an editor. I'd be honored. Alright. It took no time at all to find my house once we started walking. I'm not sure how long I've been standing here like this, just staring. 
If Aaron's been trying to talk to me, I can't hear him. Like the previous buildings in town, there are no windows to be seen. What's most concerning to me is that the front door is nowhere in sight. That feeling of uneasiness washes over me again. The fact that my home has been violated like this for who knows how long isn't a comforting thought. I don't even think about looking for the time capsule. I just want to see the damage that's been done. Oop. There's trash littered about, and glass from the windows all over the floor. The only furniture left in the living room, and the living room has either been torn to shreds or flipped over. All I can hope for is that the scuffle didn't include my parents. The room is, ne is the next I make my way into. The door was clearly kicked in. I hesitate to explore inside, not wanting to accidentally stumble upon their corpses. Eventually, curiosity gets the better of me. I let out a shuddered breath of relief. There's no one inside. Everything in here is so dusty. I know my mom would throw a fit if she was here. All the drawers are open. I doubt there's anything sentimental left behind. When I turn to make my way out, I see Aaron standing in the doorframe. He's staring at me with a worried look. I give him a shrug to try to put him at ease. I'm not really in the mood to talk. The kitchen is definitely in the worst shape. That makes sense, I guess. People looking for food would naturally ransack the kitchen. Even the fridge is gone. Don't know what they do with it, though. Nothing's in the cupboards anymore. I can still picture the sugary cereal Dad used to get for us when Mom was on business trips. Heading out of the kitchen, my muscle memory kicks in and I try to turn the non-existent lights off. I shake my head and chuckle to myself before walking down the hall to my room. Compared to the rest of the house, it's not nearly as damaged. There's stuff all over the place and my bed is completely overturned, but it's still recognizable. I guess I didn't have much stuff to take after I moved out. As if it was my, as if it was my fault try and turn the bed over. After considerable straining, it suddenly moves easily. Aaron lifts it up effortlessly, placing it against the wall. How's that? I nod before going to sit on it. A three-century-old mattress is not as comfortable as I thought it would be. It's like, no, water time. Alright. Looking, looking around at my decaying room, it still feels just a little bit like home. Here, wanna sit? I appreciate the offer, but I'm not sure if I'll survive with me on it. He instead opts to sit down on the ground and lean back against the bed. I promise I'm not trying to bug you by repeating this, but are you okay? I... I don't really know, honestly. I glance around my room again. God only knows what's taken place since I've been gone. Part of me, part of me knows it's home, but after everything that's happened, it's so foreign to me. It's like I remember everything, but the land itself has just left me behind. It has been a long time, hasn't it? I wouldn't be surprised if it's been here over 200 years since anyone's poked their head around here. From our records, most people flock together to survive. Lone stragglers didn't make it very far. Nothing wrong with that. Everyone, Everything people did to survive makes sense. Even if it meant breaking into unsuspecting houses for supplies, I can't blame them. I instinctively lean back on my bed. It's very stiff and terribly uncomfortable. Still, I was hoping I'd be able to bring, my, bring stuff back with... <sighs> well, we still have the time capsule to dig up. Oh, duh, the thing we came here for. You remember where you buried it? I think I have a good idea. Hmm. I'm happy to see that the backyard was left relatively unscathed. There's some toppled furniture and long dead plants, but it's pretty similar to what I, what I remember it as. I remember helping Mom set up her new patio. She said a metal table and chairs would last longer. I guess she wasn't wrong. The vegetation is overgrown, like the rest of the town. Sadly, the big tree we had must have died must have died a long time ago. Now it's a big husk. Sliding my fingers against the dry bark confirms that fact to me. Man, I remember climbing this thing when I was little. Mom would give me a piggyback ride to help me all the way to the top, mainly because Dad was too scared. Now it looks like a sneeze could knock it over. I shake my head. I'm getting distracted again. My gaze falls to the ground at the base of the tree. It should be down here. Do you have a shovel? On it. Aaron takes out his Axiom inventory screen and materializes a tiny shovel. You gotta remind me to stock mine with useful things like that. It's quite handy. Do you want me to dig? I'd like to try for a little while, if that's alright. Of course. Here, just be careful. I nod and take the shovel, feeling its weight in my hands. It's heavy enough where I'm definitely going to need both hands to get anywhere. I've never actually done this before. 
Time capsule should be sturdy, but let's hope I don't break it. Just take it easy. We're on vacation, after all. Well deserved one at that. Alright, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps, because uh, our first Not Safe for Work video was up. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye I take a deep breath and then pierce the ground with force, ready to get started. Well, not erratic, my heavy breathing breaks the silence we found ourselves in. It's only been ten minutes, I'm already exhausted. Just how far did we bury it? I hear the shovel clink against something metallic and out of place. The fruits of my labor are starting to show themselves. With an excited smile, I plant the shovel down into the dirt and get on my knees. I frantically push away the surrounding dirt with my hands. Eventually, I manage to dig out the centuries-old time capsule. I know it was meant to, I know it was meant to last a long time, but it's definitely showing its age. Oh, you found it! Aaron gets up from the patio furniture and then and then comes to inspect it with me. It's no bigger than a shoebox, a rusty, rusty shoebox. Wow. A part of me doesn't want to open it, just in case the contents didn't survive all this time. I look back at the house and then stand up, deciding to open it at the table. Hmm? I didn't notice Aaron staying behind. I'm enamored by the time by the capsule. It's weird to think that something concrete from my past has survived for this long. I keep staring at it after putting it on the table. Eventually, I place my hand on one of the locks. No more hesitating. It opens just like I remember, reminiscent of a treasure chest. The sound of rusted metal screeching echoes through the air as I open it. I can feel tears well in my eyes. As I breathe in, I instantly flash back to my time in elementary school. Inside, there are two letters and three stuffed animals I had. Sadly, they didn't last as long as I would have liked them to. Their fur has deteriorated along with feeling absolutely stiff. Nevertheless, the mere sight of them makes me happy. The, letterer, the letterers are what leaves me confused. The letters are what leaves me confused. One was from me and the other was from my teacher. They're the biggest letdown that's come out of this. The capsule definitely didn't preserve the letters at all. The paper wasn't preserved well, just laying at the bottom of the capsule, not even an envelope. I can barely read any of the ancient handwriting. Despite my disappointment, something else starts to trouble me. I could have sworn my parents left me one, too. Hey, <clears throat> hey, Cyrus, did you bury another one? Huh? I forget Aaron was, was here still. He's holding something I've never seen before. It's a silver box with metal trimmings bordering the edges. What's that? I don't know. It was in a hole you dug up. Unlike the time capsule I have, that box looks as if it's brand new. <coughs> Damn. <coughs> Hmm. I've never seen it before. It was down there? Yeah, almost... Uh, yeah, I almost didn't see it at first. He comes to place it on the table. Let's see. There has to be a way to open it. Aaron starts to feel it around before the capsule suddenly cracks open, causing the tiger to jump. Air starts to hiss out from the inside. Unlike my box, which has a hinge, the top of this one starts to slide back to reveal its contents. I try to push the top as far back as it can go. Inside it are a few envelopes on top of what looks like wrapped gifts. What the hell? You sure you've never seen this before? Never in my life. It reminds me of a treasure chest Dad used to find when he played when he played games. Just waiting for someone to open it. Just waiting for someone to open it. There's a piece of paper out of place that catches my eye. Picking it up reveals simple instructions. Open us from left to right, Cyrus. Open us from left to right, Cyrus. I look at Aaron with confusion, but he only shrugs. A part of me wonders if it's a trap laid by Resume, but curiosity gets the better of me. I decide to do as I'm told and then pick up the leftmost package. It's the smallest of the bunch, no bigger than a book. I open the letter attached to the wrapping paper. It's written on very nice stationery. It's from Damien. Hey, Cyrus. Sorry about my chicken scratch handwriting. Your folks asked me to write a letter to you in case you ever make it out of current. I don't want to waste any paper, and I'm not really sure if I can express myself properly with a pen, so I'll just come right out and say it. I love you, Cyrus. Second, y'all. Coffee time. <clears throat> I love you, Cyrus. You inspired me to keep going despite it all. Even though the world is ending, I hope you can find happiness. I certainly found mine. Your folks also asked me to find a gift for you. I didn't have much on me, so I went and stole one and stole one of my parents' picture frames and replaced it. It isn't much, but I hope you like it. I don't know the details on what's going on, but if you ever leave, but if you ever leave current, I hope you can live a long and happy life even when I'm gone. Don't hold yourself back on my account. I'll always love you no matter what.
dead or alive. Stay safe and stay strong, Cyrus. Love, Damien. My hands are shaking. This is a time capsule for my parents? I hastily grab the small wrapped gift. Tearing the paper makes me freeze and gasp. Aww. It's a framed portrait of me, Damien, and Diana near the end of our last school year together. We're huddled into the frame. I remember we had to lean down a little so Diana wouldn't need to be on her tiptoes. I swallow hard to try to fight back the burning sensation in my eyes. Years later, Damien wanted, wanted me to stay strong. I have to at least try, for him. I pick up the second package. It's a small box with a letter on top. This one is from Diana. Yo, Cyrus! You didn't think you'd be rid of me that easily, did you? I'm gonna try my best to not be sappy about this, mainly because I'm still pissed at you and Dad, but still. I trust your parents not to give you not to give these to current, so I'm gonna speak as candidly as I can. You're gonna go through hell, Cyrus, and that's okay, because I know you're stronger than you want to admit, and you're gonna get through this. My dad's filled me in on most of what's going on. I'm not telling anyone about it, though. I think your parents figured it out, though, when I asked about making a time capsule for you. I'm not sure how long you're gonna live after the apocalypse, but I'm hoping at the very least you'll make it out in one piece. When you do, try to plant some of these seeds, okay? They're for your favorite flower. Hopefully you didn't forget how to take care of them. I probably won't be there to tutor you. I don't really have much else to say other than to keep going, Cyrus. I hope to see you again soon. Diana. My heart warms as I clutch my chest. This is all too much to process. I can't tell if I'm reopening old wounds or just overjoyed to have some level of interaction with them. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. But yeah, so y'all, we will see y'all in our new place. Bye bye